Hi everyone, Anshita Desai. Welcome to the day three of our QA bootcamp. Today we are going to explore what happens after the requirement phase, and we'll learn one very important concept, which is shift left testing. As per this traditional HTLC process, testing happens after the development at this stage, but with the shift left testing, it happens at the early stages. It doesn't mean QA is only responsible for the testing. Instead, it emphasizes that testing activities start early and it involves everyone in the team. Now, let's understand the benefits of shift left testing. With shift left testing, you can detect your bugs quite early in the stage. It also helps you in the improved quality and cost reduction. How? So, as per this traditional way, earlier testers were involved after the development phase. That means once your website is developed, then only testing would be done. Right, so not at the requirement level, not at the design level, but with the shift left testing approach, testers are also involved in the early stages, which means at the requirement phase, at the design phase, and even during the dev phase also. These are the benefits of shift left testing. Now let's understand with shift left testing what is the importance of collaboration because it is more about involving everyone in the team. So what is the importance of collaboration? First one is the early involvement. Like I mentioned, QAs are involved quite early in the SDLC process. They are involved in the design process. So with this one, if everyone is going to collaborate, they will have a shared understanding. Also, QAs can work with the developers to find the potential challenges during the design phase. Then the coverage will also increase because if you have a better understanding of the product, you will cover as many scenarios as you can. And this will help in reducing the number of bugs at the later stage. And the most important, the efficient testing. By working together, team members can actually streamline the testing process and improve the overall efficiency. Now, let's understand what is the contribution of each role in chef left testing. So the first one is PMs. So how PMs can contribute to the chef left approach? So PMs can ensure that everything in the requirement is covered so that team can deliver a better product. So let me show you how this works. So last time we checked the story and the acceptance criteria. So this is our story which we saw in the last video. For example, over here, what PM can do? PM can provide what all screens needs to be verified for this product. For example, maybe your customers viewing this product on mobile phones or on tab or on desktop. So that information can be provided over here. Or what all browsers we need to verify on, we can provide that. And the information related to product, some edge cases from the customer perspective, if that can also be provided over here, that will also help team to deliver a better quality product. Now, the next one is designers. How designers can contribute? So designers can contribute in such a way they can provide clear and detailed design. For example, like this is the design attached to the story. And over here, so they can provide the consistent colors and better layouts which will help developers to understand how each user action should look on the page. So there's a continue button, for example, if you click on continue without filling all the details. So the pop-up should be in which color, what should be the position of that. So if these details can be provided by designers, it will also help the team to understand and deliver a high quality product. Now, next one is the developer. How developers can contribute? They can cover the edge cases and start with a TDD approach. So in this approach, they refer the test cases before writing the actual code. So they should write unit test cases as part of this process. So this will also help in delivering a better quality product. Now comes the QA. So if QAs are involved in the early discussion and review right from the start phase, so QAs also provide their input on the design decision and QAs can also provide scenarios which can be referred by developers for the TDD approach. They can also start creating their test automation cases in parallel with the development. So this is something which we will deep dive into the next video where we will see how QAs can start doing automation quite early. So this continued collaboration between QA developers and PMs during the sprint ensures that the testing considerations are part of the conversation from day one. So this is how QAs can contribute. Next one is, what are the different approaches of implementing shift left testing in any organization? Two of the main approaches are BGD and TGD. 
what is bdd so bdd basically is behavior driven development so by following bdd you can close the gap between business and technical people so basically there are three steps which are involved in bdd so the first one is the discovery phase so discovery phase means in which devs pms and qa collaborate and then they agree on the details of what's expected to be done next phase is formulation phase formulation phase means once you agree as part of step 1 then you will document this in a way that can be referred for the automation or for the code development so after discussion with the three amigos with pm developer and qa bdd cases are added to the story and then the further work begins so let's see the example over here this is the same story which we discussed in the previous video based on the discovery the in the formulation phase you will write the scenarios here so this is a bdd case first case is about the successful registration page so this is for the demo purpose i have created some sample bdd scenarios so the main idea behind using bdd is so that it can describe the behavior of the code so in bdd the scripts are written in a language called gherkin which use simple words like given when and then so these are used to describe the behavior of the software for example over here i have written given the customer is on the registration page which is basically your pre condition when they fill in the following details which is basically your action and they perform several other action for example email in a valid format enter the password checks the privacy policy check box and then is our desired result which is continue button should be enabled so the beauty of bdd is everyone is on the same page and then the chances of missing any requirement is very less and with this one you can actually find the bugs quite early so this is our second scenario which is basically about the missing mandatory field given the customer is on the registration page which is again our pre condition when they perform some action when they leave one or more mandatory fields fine then our expected result which is then the continue button should remain disabled similarly there are two more scenarios provided over here one is for the invalid email format and one is for the wrong password similar way you can also follow bdd in your organization in your team so this will help you in a better collaboration and it will also help you in the increased test coverage now after this the third step is the automation so once you have written the scenario then you will start writing your automation based on this now you will think how we can start testing before the code is ready so this part we will cover in depth in the next video now the next approach is tdd approach like i mentioned tdd is test driven development in which developers make sure the code is actually covering all the test cases and how they can follow tdd approach they can implement unit test cases to develop the code you need to have the test cases first so that's mostly what shift left testing is about and how it can be implemented remember this is just one way of doing it and every organization may have its own approach but the basic principle remains the same so if you follow this ongoing qa series i'm sure you will get some practical insights into how things happen in any organization and what the day to day work of the team looks like so yeah that's all for day 3 of our qa bootcamp series if you have any questions or if you want to share your own experiences feel free to comment below thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for the further updates